What is going on, everybody? I go by the name of Curry, and I want to thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish. After taking many L's, I finally was able to get my hands on a pair of some really exclusive, really, really dope sneakers that have an incredible history dating all the way back almost 20 years. And today we're here to talk about the origins of the sneaker and take a look at the newest version of it. So without further ado, let's get into it. Boom. And there it is, ladies and gentlemen, this is the Air Jordan 1 Concept Japan. Now, before we kick things off, I just wanna let you guys know, this is a grade school shoe here. This is only a size seven because it's the only size I can get my hands on. These sneakers sold out so quickly, it was ridiculous. But the good news is that the grade school sneakers have pretty much the same materials and the same makeup as the men's pairs. So really what we're looking at here is the exact same thing that we're gonna be looking at on the men's pair as well. Now, before we take an in-depth look at the sneaker itself, a little bit of backstory, and then we're gonna get into the real history behind this concept as a whole after we take a look at the sneaker itself. This sneaker is actually a reincarnation of a limited edition sneaker that released in Japan Pan back in 2001. Now, that was back in the day when they used to have little tags that actually told you how many pairs of the sneaker were released and which one you got. It also came with that really, really nice briefcase that we've all come to know and love so much. And Jordan Brand finally decided to bless us with the United States drop of this highly coveted sneaker. Now, there were also 2020 pairs that dropped over in Tokyo yet again over in Japan because Nike has very close ties with Japan. However, now we also got our own version. Might be a little less exclusive, it might not come with the really fly briefcase, but it's still a really nice sneaker nonetheless. All right, now starting with the upper of the sneaker here, very, very nice materials. That's really the big thing that I wanna emphasize on this particular pair is how nice a quality this sneaker is, even on a grade school pair. You got a standard Air Jordan 1 silhouette, but you have this really futuristic looking silver all throughout the sneaker. Now you got a mix of that metallic silver that you see on the collar of the sneaker here, wrapping around the heel and even on the swoosh. And that's mixed in with the more muted kind of platinum silver color that's the suede nubug very very nice nubug by the way that's in the quarter panels wrapping around the very top of the sneaker and throughout the rest of the sneaker as well including on the mud guards and the eyelets here so theoretically it's pretty simple but still really really clean and on top of that it pays pretty much exact homage to the old school pair back in 2001 and i love when jordan brand and nike take an iconic silhouette that has a lot of history behind it and they don't do anything to it they just kind of revamp it a little bit, but they keep the colors very pure. They keep the colors very original, the color blocking, everything they kept it the same. I really, really like how they executed that with this. Some details to point out here, you get the really nice jeweled Air Jordan ball and wings logo on the lateral side. You also get that same metallic silver on the toe box of the shoe. When I first took this shoe out of the box, I was like, wow, this, this sneaker is really soft. Tumbled leather tongue here. Now, the only other place we see this is on the toe box of the shoe. The leather is really, really nice. Again, even on a grade school pair, which is very impressive. Now, in addition to the tumbled leather on the tongue, you also are gonna get that nice stitched silver Nike Air logo on the tongue as well. On the back of the tongue there, OG tag, just like the 2001 pair that used to tell you which pair you got out of the 2001 pairs made. Now, this tag is in the same way with that black background, the red jump man, but in this case, it actually commemorates 2001 when the shoe originally dropped all the way to 2020 with the sneakers re-release. As far as the outsole of the sneaker, really nice silver outsole that goes nicely with the white midsole and the silver on the rest of the shoe. To my knowledge, there's no extra laces that come with the men's pair as well, but please do not quote me on that because again, I don't have a men's pair, but I believe from all the other pairs that I've seen, the only difference really was that I believe there was a silver box that came with the men's pair, but I don't think that the men's pair came with any extra laces. Correct me if I'm wrong down in the comments. And last but not least, on the insole, you have this nice silver insole here with that concept Japan Air Jordan logo with the Jumpman on the heel. And that's pretty much it when it comes to the Tokyo Concept Japan Air Jordan 1 re-release for 2020. However, now let's get into Concept Japan because it really laid the groundwork, a lot of foundation for a lot of the things that we love and enjoy about sneakers today. Unless you were around on Nike Talk back in the day, you may not really understand how deep the roots of this sneaker actually go. Back in the days before iPhones and StockX, the way that you were able to get your sneakers was through really slow 50 
6K or less internet connections and message boards, similar to Nike Talk. Nike Talk was probably one of the biggest blogs that existed back in the day, and it used to be a meeting place where OG sneaker collectors would come together and discuss recent pickups that they got, including really special exclusives that they may have gotten overseas as well. Now, if you remember back when we did the Air Force One video, I talked to you guys a little bit about regional exclusives and how there were some stores that were doing what they called SMUs, which were special mock-ups of certain colorways of iconic sneakers like Air Force Ones. Well, that trend didn't just start with that Air Force One trend on the East Coast. It actually started with other stores back in the day as well, both again in Japan and in the United States. Before you had GOAT or StockX, eBay existed, and you used to have power sellers on eBay that would go and find these special mock-ups either overseas over in Japan and Tokyo or at stores in the United States. They would grab up as many pairs as they could, and then they would take them over to whichever other country didn't have the sneakers and sell them for huge profits. Sneaker reselling isn't new, it just used to be underground. What's funny is that one of the most prevalent resellers that was doing this back in the day, Hadayo Harifumi, I think is how you say his name. He's the owner of Atmos now. You guys know Atmos is a very popular store now. A lot of store owners and people that ended up getting collaborations with Nike started off as resellers. There's hope for you yet, resellers. You still might get that Nike collaboration one day. But Hamoyo used to do that same type of grind. He would buy up sneakers one place, sell them in another place for really big profits. The thing about what he was doing though is that at the store that he was at, Nike's Japanese employees got interested in what he was doing, saw that there was a huge demand, went to his store, checked out some of the things that he had going on, and actually used that as fuel to start Concept Japan. One thing that people noticed though is that there were three particular models of sneakers that Nike was making that everybody seemed to connect with. Dunks, Air Jordans and Air Force Ones. What you started to see were releases coming out under this new Concept Japan line that Nike had that included the Linen Air Force One, the Coco Snake Air Force One. You guys remember the Nike Dunk Pro B line? In case you don't, that's what existed before SBs ever existed. And chances are, if you find a pair, you're gonna have to pay a pretty penny for a pair of Nike Dunk Pro B lines. But again, those were the originators before SBs as we know it today. This is really what set the ground work for making sneakers really, really profitable. Up until that time, sneakers were popular, but like I mentioned, they were kind of an underground thing. They were a subculture. The outcasts were the ones that used to really agonize and obsess over sneakers back in the day. But when people started seeing how much money was really in this thing, it started to take off. There was a guy named Domini, you may or may not remember, if you were around back in the day, that used to sell sneakers on eBay as well. He was one of these guys that was doing a lot of buying and selling as well through his eBay channel which was called Vintage Kicks. Vintage Kicks ended up becoming Flight Club. Now today a lot of the most prevalent figureheads in sneakers still credit Concept Japan with laying the groundwork and then pulling inspiration from certain Concept Japan projects for their personal projects. Ronnie Feig is a great example of somebody who really appreciated Concept Japan and what it was. Jeff Staple is actually quoted by saying if Concept Japan never existed we wouldn't have tier zero drops, we wouldn't have quick strikes and possibly wouldn't even have the sneakers app. The concept of exclusivity in sneakers is one that actually originated with the sneakerheads, not the companies. It was something that the company picked up on when they saw how people on the streets were responding to exclusive kicks. And that's why I really appreciate sneakers like this that remind me that there's some people in Jordan brand that truly do love the history of certain moments in sneakers that really made us what we are today. A lot of sneakerheads, especially OG sneakerheads, they know about Concept Japan. They know about these releases. And so they're connecting with these releases in a very different way than just, this is a really nice looking shoe. Don't get me wrong, it's a really good looking shoe, but there's so much history packed into this sneaker, it makes a lot of sense why the prices are going up and up and up, and it makes even more sense why they're flying off the shelves the way that they are. I told you guys this before, you know, I'm at that age where I can appreciate both sides of the coin, right? I appreciate the historical significance of a sneaker like the Concept Japan, Metallic Air Jordan 1, but I also appreciate
appreciate a lot of the OGs and what they used to do for us to be able to have these sneakers and these amazing collaborations and all the things that we have today in sneakers. We wouldn't have a lot of these collaborations if it wasn't for those people doing those SMUs back in the day and ordering those 10,000 pairs, 20,000 pairs of a certain colorway of a sneaker in Baltimore or in Japan or another part of the country. And the people really doing that grassroots kind of support without having big billion dollar stock X like businesses to back it up. Never forget guys, no matter how big sneakers begins, it started as a very small subculture. It started as a group of people that just loved kicks and loved the stories and loved the colorways. And the beautiful thing about this sneaker is that it reminds me never to lose touch of that. Never to lose that thing that made us fall in love with sneakers in the first place. So my question to you guys today, and I want you guys to sound off down in the comment, in addition to what do you think about these, is when did you fall in love with sneakers? What sneaker really made you fall in love with sneakers? Or are you in love with sneakers? Is it something that you really have a passion for? Do you care about the history and the stories? Or are you just on the hunt for whatever looks dope? There's no wrong answer. It really is up to you. But I'm interested to hear where you guys are in the sneaker game right now. All right, guys, listen, that's pretty much all that I got for these today. Now, again, I want you guys to sound off down in the comments and let me know what you guys think about the Air Jordan 1 Tokyo Concept Japan re-release for 2020. Were these on your must cop list? Were you able to get yourself a pair? Or if you weren't, are you still on the hunt for a pair? Prices are pretty high right now, so hopefully they'll come down and you guys can cop them a little bit more comfortably in the near future. Or if these were a hard pass for you and you're not feeling the all silver joints, sound off down below and let me know that as well. I'd love to hear your comments. Oh, of course, write down in the comments, make sure that you Click on that subscribe button so we can welcome you into the Sneaker Fetish family to make sure you don't miss out on any more heat that comes through like this because I guarantee you, I got a lot more heat on the way. As always, I wanna thank you guys for joining me here today on Sneaker Fetish, taking a look at these with me, unboxing them with me for a couple of minutes. I go by the name of Kari. This is the Air Jordan 1 Tokyo Japan Concept Japan re-release for 2020. And until next time, I'm out.